Hello again, I am Blunty. This is the Intel Nook 8i7HVK, or by a friendlier moniker, it's the Hades Canyon Nook. It's literally pocket-sized and so powerful it can do VR without even flinching. But we're going to circle back to that in a second. As we kick into a few minutes of me being impressed by this pocket-sized PC, I do want to throw a hat tip to Intel for sponsoring this video and for letting me play with their fancy new Nook. This beastie started hitting shelves a couple of months back, and I've been waiting to have a poke at it ever since. See, the big deal thing here is it's not just that it's another super compact but full function PC. There are a few of those around these days, and they're pretty fun. But most are basic low or mid tier critters that are great for office work and other lightweight duties and stuff, but this has a gamer's pulse. See, as odd as it is to say, seeing as how on the CPU side of things they are competitors, Intel have teamed up with AMD for the single chip at the heart of this monster. It's pumping Intel's 8th generation Core i7 CPU, which is carefully mated with some of AMD's GPU know-how, with a custom RX Vega M GPU. And the Hades Canyon Nook is the first to be released with this unique hybrid chip. And beyond being way more powerful and game capable than any other similarly sized ultra small PC, it also features an unexpectedly large variety and quantity of I.O. ports. Two Thunderbolt ports, two Display Port ports, two LAN ports, four USB 3 ports, and a HDMI port, and that's just on the back side. On the front, there's a headphone and mic jack, USB C, another HDMI port, and two more USB 3 and an SD card reader. I've had full size desktop PC rigs with noticeably fewer I.O. options. Oh, it also has Wi Fi and Bluetooth on board, but you know, that's all built in, there's no hole in the front for that. When you buy one of these things, it comes in a bare bones state, which means you get to spec out and add whatever kind and whatever amount of RAM and storage as you see fit for your own personal needs and wants. I've got here a nice 32 gigabyte kit of HyperX's HyperX Impact RAM. The NARC uses SODIM memory just like a laptop, which should be for obvious reasons, right? And as a performance device, it's smart to go for high performance memory, like the HyperX stuff here, rather than just some bog standard cheapo laptop RAM. For the main storage drive, I've got 500 gigabytes of WD Blue M.2 SSD, and I'll be augmenting that with Intel's Optane memory, which I'll have a separate video on soon, but suffice to say for now, it is designed to kind of supercharge the efficiency of data access and make stuff like booting windows and loading games and loading game levels and stuff like that even faster. Oh, and in case you're wondering, yes, you can change that skull logo to whatever color and light pattern you like. You can even turn it off if you're after a more subtle and less aggressive look. And something I particularly love about it, it's been smartly designed in a way that makes it completely vanish when you turn the lights off. You can't even see a trace of it. So then, the insides and the outsides meet with blunty approval, but the regulars around here know what I really care about is how it works in the real world. And I do have to admit, I came into this with doubts, because Intel pointed this thing and they say VR capable, and I worried about that. I mean, it's so small. My initial non-VR tests indicated a performance somewhere midway between a GTX 1050 Ti and a GTX 1060, which, don't get me wrong, is very impressive all on its own, considering either one of those graphics cards on its own is about the same size or larger than the entirety of this system. But it did give me doubts with VR. I mean, running VR and having a good VR experience are not the same thing. Would I have frame rate issues or lag spikes, both of which in regular games can be annoying but not necessarily a deal killer. But issues like that in VR can lead to physical queasiness pretty darn quickly. But, <laughs> you know, this is an Intel sponsored video, and in such videos, the sponsor generally wants a focus on what their product does well, and not so much focus on stuff it's not suited for. So at this stage, and given that I'm probably showing you VR gameplay right now in the edits, you can assume pretty safely that unless I had a very good VR experience, I'd have focused my attention on this video elsewhere, wouldn't I? And of course, the fact is, the VR experience was not only good, it was remarkable. Now, I'm sure there are some high-end, super-demanding VR stuff that may force some compromises on settings or something, but everything I tried actually ran flawlessly. I was gobsmacked, and I do mean flawlessly, by the way. The experience was indistinguishable from my own full-size VR desktop rig. 
And given how standing and room scale VR can be a bit of an issue for some of us without a living space large enough to permanently accommodate a VR play space, the Hades Canyon Nook becomes a very attractive option for set up anywhere, anytime VR rigs, especially if you pair it with a Windows MR headset like I'm using here. It doesn't need any external cameras or sensors or lighthouses, you can just plug it in via USB and HDMI and you're away. And that means you can carry with you a full room scale VR setup in two hands. And yes, if you're curious, I have seen it personally working with the Vive perfectly well and I've read about it working well with the Rift. Again, I'm being paid to make this video, but again, I am honestly stunned how well this thing works for VR. It's even pretty quiet. I mean, it's not silent, or at least not when under demanding loads like VR, but it is quieter than many laptops I've tried, and basically silent completely when asked to do simpler stuff like media playback and browsing when I put it to work as a living room PC hooked up to my projector. In regular AAA gaming, you can expect stuff at 1080p high settings to run at or near 60 frames per second without much issue at all. If you think of its graphical performance as a midpoint between a 1050 Ti and a 1060, you have a pretty good idea about what this thing is capable of. There is actually two versions of this Nook. The Nook 8i7HVK, which is the one I've been testing, comes with Radeon RX Vega MGH graphics. It is overclockable and VR capable. But there's also the Nook 8i7HNK. It comes with the Radeon RX Vega MGL graphics. And this more affordable unit is useful if your priority is less about 1080p gaming and VR and more about being a general ultra compact workhorse PC. Both units can drive up to six displays, which is just crazy, and both share the same amount of incredibly useful I.O. ports for stooning the outside. So, you know what? Well done, Intel and AMD engineers. You all are pretty clever. I keep thinking of new ways I can use this little pocket monster and it makes me smile. As a ridiculously portable VR rig, as a rig I can hook up to the hotel room TVs for a bit of on-the-road editing and gaming, as a very powerful media device for the living room, as a subtle and tidy bedroom gaming rig, even as a media hub for streaming and transcoding out to other devices in the home. It's such a handy little tool. I'm super impressed by it. And while before now, from my own perspective, these sort of ultra-compact PCs were cool and novel, now, with this beastie, it has become desirable. This thing is powerful enough to do the things that I want to be doing with, with, with the things. That was an incredibly bad sentence. <laughs> Thanks for watching. I am Blunty, and I will catch you next time.